Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to the Toast to the Men Network with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead, hit that like button before we get started. Get that jumped off right now. Also, toasters, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when this content drops. Let's go. Toasters, I saw a video on TikTok, and the video was of this man, relatively young. I would say, well, he did have some salt and pepper hair in his beard. But let's say he was early, uh, maybe late 30s, mid to late 30s, I would say. Uh, No more than early 40s, I would say. Had decent skin, salt and pepper. So I I think he was relatively young. His video was him expressing his disappointment, his hurt, about being stood up by a young lady who was supposed to meet him on a date. Now this man had flowers to give this young lady who was supposed to meet him, allegedly. And uh, he went on to say that he's just basically looking for his person, uh, looking for someone who appreciates others' time, uh, appreciate his time, appreciate what he brings to the table. He would like to get married. He would like to have kids. He just wants his person. I want to dive into that. And... I know the natural reaction for most is to feel sorry for this young man, to have pity, to be saddened. That's a natural reaction. I'm not saying you shouldn't have that reaction, but if you watch my videos long enough, I'm very objective, um, logical, but I'm emotional also. Hey, man, I'm a cancer. I'm emotional. Trust me. I'm emotional. I'm empathetic. And so, you know, empath, but I try to merge the two. I try to merge logic and emotion or logic and passion. And that's where we get our best results, our best answers. Um, That's where we take our best steps and actions in life when we can merge the two. And what I mean by merging the two is very dangerous and probably irresponsible by one logic or emotion really outweighing the other by a great deal. I think it's, it's dangerous. I'll just give you an example. Like, we don't have a plane in the sky if we don't combine logic and emotion or logic and passion. The passion says, man, we can do that. We can put something in the sky. The logic says, wait, hold up. Let's not just get out here willy nilly it. And they're responsible because people can die. Let's get a plan. Let's sit down. Let's do some pilots, some pilot runs, no pun intended, pilot runs, some testing. Let's do all the due diligence we need to do and be as safe as we can before we actually get too high above ground level because people can die. And people have died, right? So logic would say, oh, hell no, nah, man, people can die. I'm not doing that, and it will stop you, just purely logic. Because a lot of stuff, if you look at it, if we just go by logic, we take out emotion and passion, we wouldn't do certain stuff. It would scare us, it would frighten us. Just logic alone, it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be possible. You know, miracles or the impossible is done through emotion and when you combine that with logic, you have success. But you take a chance through passion, emotion, and then and combine it with logic, of course, like I said, you birth success. And you minimize, you know, deaths or, you know, cost. Uh, if I see a burning building, a burning house, and there's kids in there, that are screaming, logic would say, hell no, I'm not going in that house. I'm going to be a victim. That's what logic would say, just pure logic. Because it doesn't make sense logically to go into a burning house. Emotion, passion would say, man, I can get those kids out. Those kids, I got to get those kids out. I can get them out. But when we combine the two, 
We got the passion to get those kids out, but we come up with a plan. We're kind of resourceful. And that increases our chances of being successful in getting those kids out the burning house. And that's what I believe, that combination, that formula I believe in throughout life. So when I look at this young man, I hear this young man, I hear him. But let's be objective, right? Let's remove some emotion. Let's be logical. We don't know this young man. And although his words are uh, disheartening, sad, and it evokes emotion out of us, we don't know the whole story. We don't know what the conversations were like over the phone. Did he say something off the wall? Did he say something disrespectful, weird, perverted? We don't know this, right? We also don't know if he's delusional, right? We haven't seen the woman who was supposed to meet him. We haven't seen her. Now, let's just say she's a baddie. Let's say she's a 10. And I'm not even going on the brother's looks, man. I don't judge men's looks because I got some homies and I've known people that weren't all that according to society. Physically wasn't all that according to society, but they pulled some bad ones and they were not tricking. They were not simps. And so I want to touch on that. So aside from, from what you may think about his looks, what this brother lacks is confidence. And that's obvious. That's obvious. We don't even have to discuss that. We don't have to guess. This brother lacks confidence. So when you see he lacks confidence, do you think that lack of confidence came over, came across the phone lines, came across texts, that lack of confidence? Well, what was he saying? Just from what you saw in the video, go, go look at the video on TikTok. I may put a link. I will put a link in the, in the uh, description. But from the video, what's the probability of insecurity coming across those lines, coming across texts. I think it's very probable. Because a confident man who's sure about himself, regardless of your look, man, confidence is within. A confident man doesn't get on video crying and complaining, talking about he's looking for his person and crying about being stood up. You're like, well, you're like, whoa, just chalk it up. Now, I've never been stood up, so I don't know how that feels, but I have been in situations where it didn't go my way. I was feeling her more than she was feeling me. Was, oh, well. He turned that situation to something else if he's confident. I heard music in the background, looked like there's a good vibe going on wherever he's at. Turn that thing around. That's an opportunity for you to meet somebody. Oh, well, she didn't show up. That's an opportunity for you to meet somebody. That's how you got to look at it. She's not the only person or only female left in the world. They outnumber us. See, it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. And your perspective will mold your actions or direct your actions. Your perspective will direct your actions or, or dictate your actions. He has the wrong perspective. He's in a woe is me. He's in like, women ain't no good probably. Like, nah, man, listen. For change to happen, for you get the results you want, you're going to have to look within. Because the fact of the matter is, you can't change anyone. You can't change anyone. I promise you, as soon as he changes his attitude, his perspective, his frequency, his vibration, he will draw what he's supposed to draw. He will draw what he wants to draw. But as long as his energy is off, he's going to get these kind of results. And let me tell you, he's barking up a dangerous tree by putting this video out because he may just get what he's looking for in the space he's in right now, in the energy he's in right now. Because there are women who are opportunists that are looking at his video. And I'm, I'll guarantee you, man, women have reached out to him through his DM. I guarantee you. 
So he's going to get exactly what he wants, but he's not in the space to handle what he really wants. He's not, he doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have the confidence to handle that. And they would run him through, man. They would take all he got and he'd be desolate, man. He, he'd be a shell of himself. He, he thinks he's low now, but the energy he's sending out into the world, into the universe is going to bring him more negativity. And people are going to see him, women are going to see him as an opportunity. Bad choice by him doing that. Very bad choice. He has to work on him. And I know people commenting on uh, his, his lazy eye. Hey, man, it doesn't matter. Biggie Smalls had a lazy eye. Uh, Forrest Winokur got a lazy eye. I mean, it's all about your confidence. It's all about you feeling good about you, uh, being secure about what you bring to the table. You may not have this or that, but you know you have this. Whatever that this is, you have this and that. And that's where you, you stake your flag, right there. And be confident in that, you know, not conceited, but confident. Be sure of yourself. Uh, whatever, man, you may be lacking height and you want to be taller. You, you can't do anything about that. You may not have the money you want. You, now, that could change. You know, you could do something about that. But even within that space, be confident where you are. Strive for more if you want more, but be confident in who you are. If you got a one bedroom, be confident in that. Whatever your situation, be confident in. But if you want more, strive for more. If you want more and you're not striving for more, sit your ass down, man, because you're full of it. But this brother got to look within and handle himself accordingly. Don't look outside. And I know brothers are saying, it's women's fault. It's this or that. Times have changed. Times have changed. Times will forever change. We got different ages. Get used to it. That's never going to stop. And uh, energy changes, flow changes. People progress. People digress, uh, you know, I guess. But uh, it is what it is. We can complain, but you have to look within. And, and I heard a brother say, I heard a brother say in the 50s, this wouldn't be an issue because, you know, this brother probably is stable, has stable income means of living, uh, faithful, he's not a thug. And in the 50s, he would be married by now. Maybe. It's not a guarantee. Uh, not a guarantee, but maybe. Back then, women made less, and they were looking for security. They were looking for security. Now women are making more money. And so they're not selling for something they don't want physically. Uh, before they settle, man, they'll, they'll just hop bed from bed. They even have different sex partners before they settle down for something they don't want physically. But back then, yeah, in the 50s, women will settle for something they may not have seen uh, to be so attractive or handsome. But if he was a provider and made a good mate as far as uh, – um, stability, protection, you know, if he was a high character, you know, they would, uh, they would marry that gentleman. Women got many choices now, like I said, man, they're making bread, they can survive on their own financially, even though I think personally it takes a toll on them. I think it's out of order, but to each his own. But uh, this is nothing new. Women have always wanted tall, dark, and handsome. That, that started in the early 1900s, that saying, tall, dark, and handsome. And then Hollywood just, I mean, took it to a whole nother level in like in the 20s. Yeah, I'm a movie buff. So Hollywood took it to a whole nother level, this dark, tall, dark, and handsome theme, to a whole nother level in the 20s. So women have always been into looks, man. Don't get it twisted. Always. You can go back further than that in Greek times, ancient times, whatever. You can go all the way back. Women have always been into looks. The difference is they didn't have the means of really surviving on their own and living the, the life they wanted to live as a single woman. And it was looked down upon for a woman to be bed hopping. 
So we're more liberal now, uh, more unrestrictive. And so there's pros and cons to that. But yeah, don't get it twisted. Don't don't think just is a guarantee his brother could have got him a baddie back in the day. And going on that, man, you got to understand, is he ready for a baddie? Because I, I, think, I think this guy is, is out of his lane. And I'm not talking about his physical features. I'm talking about his confidence, man, to have a baddie. To have a baddie who knows she's a baddie. You got to have a certain level of confidence. And he needs to ask himself. He needs to look at his video and say, would a baddie feel confident? with me, what I'm showing on this video. Would a baddie feel secure? Would a baddie feel like she has to walk on eggshells and coddle me from what I'm showing on this video? That's what he has to look within and ask himself. Because he's not sending out that energy that he even draws that kind of attention or deserves that kind of, that kind of woman. You know, the space he's in right now, he needs a woman who needs just as much emotional attention as he does, whose confidence is as low as his, where he is right now. If he wants differently, he has to project differently. He has to put out a different frequency, point blank. I got a, well, I won't give a title. I, I know someone <laughs> because he, he may see this. I know someone. And we hadn't kicked it in a while. Uh, but this someone is very closely tied to me. So I started learning a lot. Although we grew up together, I started learning a lot about him when we got grown and started dating about what we like, what I like, he likes. And uh, I found out probably when I was like 35, and he's like 34 at the time, I found out that this brother's very, very, very picky. Very picky. So I'll tell you back then, I don't know if he's changed. I'll tell you back then some of uh, his prerequisites. At 34 at the time, he was 34. The woman had to be in her 20s, early 20s, mid to early 20s for him to date her. He wanted long hair. She had to be thin. And uh, no stress marks. I don't know if he would take them if they had kids or not. I don't know. But no stretch marks. That really turned them off. Stretch marks turned them off. She had to be in her 20s, early 20s to mid 20s. Long hair. Yeah, super thin. Uh, can't remember his skin color, complexion. Can't remember if he was picky on that or not. But, you know, uh, this, this is just what he wanted. And he would not settle. He wouldn't settle. Now, on the flip side, man, this brother was overweight. Uh, didn't have any sense of taste and style. It was uh, unkept often. Uh, a functioning alcoholic. Functioning. So my every day get blasted, but he would be at work. So he did provide a steady paycheck. Uh, but he's a functional alcoholic. Um, somewhat irresponsible, somewhat of a pushover with family. Family took advantage of him. Broke him at some point, although he rebounded. So he didn't know how to say no. Um, at one time, he had a fight party. Mayweather was fighting somebody. And I took, I took the, the woman I was with at the time, who ended up being my wife. We were dating. I took her with me. And, and, and my brother came also. He came separately. My, me and my girlfriend at the time, who ended up being my wife and my brother, we came separately anyway. But it was a packed house. Me and them women, packed house. He had a roommate who I'm close to also. <laughs> the roommate is a little younger than us. And we're all connected since kids, but I won't give a title. And 
My girlfriend at the time said she had to go to the restroom. And my brother told her, but he overheard her telling me she had to go to the restroom. And I'm about to tell her where the restroom is. I'm about to point to it. And my brother leans in. He says, you're better off going to that corner store up the street, taking a piss in that bathroom. So I'm just giving you a picture of what this man wanted and desired, but the energy, the frequency he was putting out there to the world. So what? I was 35 at the time, I'm 47, so it's 12 years later. He still has not had a steady girlfriend. He still has not been married. He's still dating, saying this might be the one. Look at all the money he spent. Look at all the money, man, all the time he wasted, all the money he spent. You know, um, because really, man, he didn't deserve what he said he wanted. He wasn't putting in the work. He said he wanted something, but he was sending out something else. He wanted top tier, but he sent it out subpar energy. And those are the results he's gotten. So I say that to say we don't know everything, know everything about this young man in the video. We don't know if he has certain standards just like that, which are not realistic. Not because of his looks, but because of his energy. We don't know. So I don't feel sad. I don't feel happy about his situation either. I'm neutral about it. Uh, I hope he finds the confidence and peace inside and he can make another video months or years from now. And this brother is radiating a, a totally different vibe and energy. And I know it's possible. But that brother has to look within and make the changes he needs to make. Man, this ain't about women. This ain't about the times. This ain't. This ain't. This is about what they what's going on with them. So let me know what you think, Toasters. Toasters, as always, from me to you, love. Peace.